Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. We would like to welcome you to Abundant Love Sunday School Session on this morning, May 29, 2022. And the title of our lesson today is Paul's Thorn in the Flesh. Paul's Thorn in the Flesh. We truly have a good lesson on this morning, and we're going to dive in, but we want to thank you for joining us on this morning. And if you have your Bibles, we the lesson is being taken from 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 1st through the 10th verse. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. And if you don't have a Sunday school book, we're going to ask that you grab your Bible so you can follow along with us. And so we can hear what thus saith the Lord. To the left of me, I have the right Reverend Elder Greg Smith. God bless you. <laughs> and to the right of me, I have the studious, beautiful Miss Marilyn. Amen. And we are glad to have both of them with us on this morning. And so before we go any further, we're going to bow our heads and ask Elder Smith to pray over us this morning. Father, we thank you for praise for another day. Lord, to you, hallelujah, Lord. Bless this, bless this teaching this morning, all yes, those Lord. that are involved, Lord. Bless those who are the hearers and the doers of your word, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. God is good all the time and all, all the, the time. time. God is yes. good. He is worthy to be praised. Yes, and there are so many different avenues that you can go to um, in regards to this lesson today, Paul's, Paul's thorn in the flesh. A lot of different directives, a lot of different ways that we could speak about this lesson. But we're going to find out what Paul was saying today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what we're going to do is that we're going to start off by reading um, the word. And we've got ten verses. So if um, Elder Smith, if you would take the first three. And then, Miss Marilyn, if you could take the other three, and then I'll um, follow behind. Amen. 2 Corinthians 12 and 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. 2 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Five. Of such and one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Verse 7, And least I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Eight, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Nine, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Man, may the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and doers of his word. <clears throat> you know, that those scriptures are so powerful 
to get uh, an understanding of where Paul was. And a lot of us, uh, even though we name the name of Christ, all of us wouldn't be able to say, I take pleasure mm -hmm. in infirmities, in reproaches, in persecution, in distresses. Uh, no, I, I can't say that I would say that, you know. <laughs> Yesterday in our women's fellowship, I am still under construction. Yes, yes. Amen. And we all have some uh, coming up and some areas where we need to be tweaked, where we need uh, God to intervene in. And so this is this is powerful. So we're going to ask um, Sister Marilyn if she would read the introduction, please. The idea of unanswered prayer permits Christian teaching. Unfortunately, this is a result of, of an inadequate understanding of scripture. The teaching that God does not answer us when we pray is without biblical merit. Just because God does not give us all our requests does not mean that he does not answer our prayers. I recall several times in my youth asking my parents for a particular thing only to, be, only to be told to wait. That did not mean they failed to answer me. It just meant I had to be patient. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, as we see in this week's lesson, God says, God even says no to our request. Again, no is an answer just as wait is an answer. Mm -hmm. God does not ignore you. If he is telling you to wait, then wait. Mm -hmm. If he tells you no, then ask him to bring your desire to line with his perfect will. Mm -hmm. God loves you and has your best interest, our best interest in mind. I think the key to the introduction was that those last couple of lines that we had talked about. Mm -hmm. um, ask him to bring your desire into line with his perfect will. And we all definitely want, we don't want God's permissive will, we want his perfect will. We want his will to be done, and we want to um, for him to be glorified and to be praised. God is, um, I thank God that for there's a lot of things that we've asked for in our lifetime, and I'm so glad that he said, well, he just said either wait or he did not answer. And I'm so glad. Yes. Because I, it would have put me, as I say, in a tizzy. Yes. I would have had some difficulty. But praise God, he gives us the best because he's looking out for his children. Amen. Now, I would like to start off by asking uh, the both of you a summary of what you got out of the lesson. Well, as I was reading, um, I was trying, I went into a different uh, version of the Bible to get a better uh, understanding of, of Paul's vision as we understand it. He was actually having a vision and breaking it down, uh, God knew already about his vision. Um, and also, our title says, Paul's thorn in the flesh. That was where I got the most out of it. Even mm -hmm. through um, our pain and our infirmities and everything, God will yet use us, and that's basically getting through the whole lesson, that he will use your uh, weakness for his glory. Amen. And we let him do that. Amen. My best part is, he actually didn't try to take glory for the vision. Mm -hmm. you know, he didn't try to go deep trying to allow to have it to explain it to the Corinthians just what he had saw and what he went through at that time because in my, my opinion they wouldn't have understood it anyway. Right. right. You know, because there's a level you have to reach for God to start giving you insight. Mm -hmm. This kind of insight there's a level of Christ that you have to reach. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, first of all, the part that uh, of kind of where I started at when I was reading, my mind went back to uh, Saul. Because at first he was Saul before he came Paul. <laughs> and he had a different task at hand versus than what he was doing in this lesson. Uh, he was a rebel. Yes. And he believed in persecuting the saints. I can't think of anything worse than persecuting the saints. Mm -hmm. And he was dutiful. 
he was uh, he was on his job, and he and so it's a beautiful thing to know that God can change anybody. Yes, Amen. I often me and my husband talk, and especially about the life that he was in for 20 years and how God delivered him from that way of life. Well, you know, there's a God somewhere. Oh, yeah. And it is a beautiful thing to, to know that transformation can be done, that God is yet on the throne and that he still performs miracles. Amen. And we can't doubt it. All of us have our own testimony. Um, I remember Sister Kathy used to say, if you knew my real story, yeah. all of us have a real story. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And all of us have been somewhere and all of us have experienced things in life that we are not very proud of yeah. and that we wish never happened. Yeah. But Saul was true to who he was and when God transformed him on the road to Damascus, he, his name was changed from Saul to Paul. And learning more about the thorn in the flesh, we're getting ready to get into that now. It's just, it's just like a wheel that's turning. It's like, which way do I go? Which way do I go? <laughs> but it's, um, it's a lesson that you can put your own self in. Because we all experience some type of thorn in the flesh. Maybe not exactly like what Paul did, but we all experience that. Or have it, or might still be in it right now. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's start with uh, Paul's vision of heaven. So when they talked about Paul's vision of heaven, what were your thoughts about that, Sister Marilyn? Um, well, Paul's vision of heaven. Um, I was reading it, and I was like, okay, his vision of heaven, as, he, as it was given to him, he said he went up there, and he, he felt in his vision, in a body or out of body is what it says, and um, he saw things, or he said uh, things that he couldn't even utter. Mm -hmm. So, um, not man uttering. So, he knew he was somewhere where he, he didn't go into depth and explain to people what it was because they would not have understood. Mm -hmm. So, there, because there's three heavens, they said, well, yeah, the heavens where God, our God, Father lives, and mm -hmm. yet so he's here with us. And the middle one is earth, and then, of course, you know, that one. So, right. yeah, so that was what I had. Man, that was Smith. That's the question. Yes, sir. Um, Paul's vision of heaven, what did that segment, what did that mean to you? What did you pull out of that? I think it was a wonderful thing for the Lord to show him in different realms. Mm -hmm. You know, not just one, not just where we are now. There, there are greater realms. There's lower and there's greater than where we are now. Amen. And it's had to be an awesome thing to, for him, for Paul to witness that. He had much favor with the Lord. For the Lord to take him and show him there's a better place. Amen. There's more to life and afterlife than here on earth. Amen. You know what I thought about when I um, was thinking about that section? I thought that somebody that did wrong for such a long period of time and God transformed him and now he's doing things of the Lord. And now God is showing him a mighty visions and he has prophecy and he's not a dumb man. Mm -hmm. He was not somebody that did not have high intellect and understand what the word was, what it was about. But God yet used him. And you know, sometimes it reminds, and I took it to the example of the church. Sometimes there's been people that have been in ministry for years, and you know, they say, I've been in this way a long time. I mean, literally. They've been in the church for a long period of time. And somebody that comes from off the street in the ministry for a short period of time, but because their heart is receptive to what God wants to do with them, and the Lord just starts to use them in a mighty way. Some of those that have been in the church a long period of time might get a slight jealous, you know, streak. Well, they just came here. We've been here for years and years and years. But it's a testimony to the works of what God can do in your life when you are surrendered. And that's what happened to, that's what happened to Paul. He surrendered his life and he gave up his 
wicked way for a better way in serving the Lord. And so that was the part that kind of resonated in me that no matter what background you come from, no matter you know, what you've done, God is yet capable and able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we ask or think. He is able to deliver us. And I thank God for that because there's no special, there's no special person. No big eye, no little you, whether you're short, tall, stubby. Doesn't matter. God yet has a purpose for my life. And I thank God for that. You know, yeah. my take on that is when you didn't know the Lord and you come to know the Lord, mm -hmm. you're more open to what he can do. Amen. You're looking for, you know, closer to be closer to him and to please him. Amen. You know, and to do the work, you know, it's like when you first get saved, you want to go witness to the world. Amen. Yeah, Amen. 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 You don't and yes. pass out tracks. You know? Amen. So it's uh, it's a thing of where your heart is. Yeah. Amen. You know, even if you've been in the church a long time, yes. does your heart still, is your heart still in a place where God can use Amen. to glorify his kingdom? Amen. And that's, if I may, it's just in, the, in the lesson it says, no one can ascend to God on their own. He must be called by the power of God. And it's the awesome power of God, no matter who you are, or where you came from, your background, or what you've been through. He's still there. It's not us that, I mean, we, God doesn't walk away from us, we walk away from him. Amen. But if Amen. you allow, you know, like, it's, like she already said, if you allow him to be receptive of him, because first I always say, you have to believe in order to receive. Amen. If you don't That's believe, right. then your heart is shut down already anyway. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. But if you open up to God, the awesome wonders mm -hmm. that he has for you, the miraculous mm -hmm. miracles and the things that he performs in your life, mm -hmm. no man can do. No man can do. Amen. We have a question on the floor today. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Bobby Bush. Just, just a comment. Um, you were talking about the thorn in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And how Paul, well, actually how Saul became Paul. Right. And basically it was God using him, the weaknesses that he had went through because he was at odds with the Corinthians as far mm -hmm. as his qualifications and his ability and his authority. They were at war with him on every hand Amen. where he was trying to stand up for Christ. Amen. And as far as the thorn in his side, he said that it was a messenger from Satan. Mm -hmm. And instead of him using his weaknesses as a crutch, God was using them for his strength. Right. Whereas he was suffering in these different areas, God was building him up. Right. Letting him stand strong and look, you know, powerful in front of the Corinthians while he was working through him. Amen. Because it wasn't Paul, and Paul continued to boast about how good God was to him right. and what he had brought him through yeah. and how he continued to work for him. Amen. Whereas the Corinthians kept trying to see his faults, mm -hmm. where they right. could try and tear him down uh -huh. yeah. and put the, put the blame somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But God continued to hold him up. Yes. And he does that to us today. Right. We, like you said, we all have a thorn somewhere. somewhere. And see, yeah. some of those thorns have a barb that where it goes in, it's got those little pricklies. That when you get ready to pull them out, they want to catch skin on the way back out. Right. But he uses that kind of weakness to show himself strong, to bring us through those situations and not necessarily just to change the situation. Right. We're going to pull up another chair. You know, I, as he was talking, I was thinking about, like you mentioned earlier, about 
how he had academic accomplishments and he was a renowned first century rabbi and that he spoke multiple languages and my bingo he was fluent, you know. And all of those things are good. It didn't take anything from him. We know they were true. But when it came to teaching the Church of Corinthians, what would that have benefited? I mean, would that have been beneficial? No. 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 There was a greater reasoning of why Paul was chosen to do this task at hand, which leads back to the thought, we all have a task. We all have something that God has given us to do. We all have something that God has uh, put on our hearts, and sometimes we don't move as quickly as we should in being obedient to what God has given us to do. And I think the thought to me was, all of these things are good and fine, but would it have benefited God's people? No, it had been of no effect. And, but the thorn in his flesh, Paul knew that this was going to be something that, first of all, God can get the glory out of, and that this is something that he was going through. It was something that the people could see. It wasn't something that was just inwardly like a bad headache or a toe ache or, you know, whatever the saints of God go through. Uh -huh. But, you know, it, it, it was something that other people around him could see. And yet, Paul did, he was still yet spiritually poised and remembered his task of what he was called to do. Amen. What do you have to say about that, Ellen Smith? You know, when you have you know, when you, your body's inflicted, you, you can go to some dark places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. The doctor That's it. telling That's you it. one time and you're standing on God's promise. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, and yet still the medicine is not working mm -hmm. and the situation mm -hmm. don't seem to be getting Come any better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, those are some terrible times in Christian's life mm -hmm. because yet you want to believe God is going to heal you, but at that time you're suffering. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it can get hard to keep going and going and going while you're afflicted with mm -hmm. different illnesses and sicknesses and whatever it might be, you know. So, therefore, for him to keep going regardless was awesome. In the, where it might have took that, those visions mm -hmm. to encourage him not to quit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He started many churches and he still had to minister and try to correct the wrongs that were in those churches. Mm -hmm. You know, for him to fall off the scene at that time would have been detrimental. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and, and yet still, you know, we have some things that afflict us that we can't keep going mm -hmm. to the church. Mm -hmm. We can't keep uh, seeing the saints, you know, but we got to know that God is, you know, God is a healer. And if he don't heal you, you still got to keep going. Amen. Amen. Because something's going to come upon us just to correct us. Yes. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Come on, Elder. Yes. <laughs> I want to sound here. Yeah. What? <laughs> Freeze, brother. Yeah. <laughs> So um, when he was called to the third heavens, I'm going to correct what I said previously. So the Jews have been taught that the third heaven is the dwelling place of God. The first heaven is the earth's atmosphere. The second heaven is outer space. And the third heaven is the unseen domain where God lives. Amen. And Paul did not know whether he was in his body or not, but he does seem concerned with that detail. He was content to be with God who knows all things perfectly. And as you said, we go through. Mm -hmm. I know we were stuck in through. Yeah. He'll take right. us all the way out. Right. He'll take us all the way out. Amen. No matter what he goes, if you stand fast on his faith, you have to, just a little bit of the mustard seed. Mm -hmm. okay. Just a little bit. Okay. God, that's God, right. He'll heal. He'll allow you to heal. That's why I said the woman spot a fellowship yesterday. Yeah. I had gone, been gone through something, and I was just waiting on confirmation because I already knew that God had already healed me. Yeah. Right. right. That's right. right. Confirmation. Amen. Amen. So Amen. 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 That's good. Yeah. That's good. He gets you stirred up. Yeah. Um, the scripture that came 
in my mind, again, is what I talked about yesterday. It says, after you have suffered a while, the Bible says that he'll establish you, he'll strengthen you, yes. he'll settle you, yes. he'll make you perfect. Yes. And a lot of people, when you're thinking about perfect, it's not, you know, that the, your errors, but he's going to put you at a better place. Yes. He'll be a better place yes. uh, spiritually where you can be. Yes. And that scripture, is it just speaks volumes to me about how when we go through, we are not helpless yes. or hopeless. Yes. That, that is something that, that, that is not part of as you say, the repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> we are not helpless or hopeless, yes. but we yet have an advocate with the Father. Yes. And the other part that I wanted to pull out is uh, stated that Paul acknowledges that nothing is ever to be gained by boasting in the flesh. Right. Well, there's no good thing in the flesh. That's right. And how could he have reached the church of Corinthians if he would have boasted in the flesh? Right. Amen. There was no, there was nothing to gain. Nothing. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. There's nothing that God can't do. Mm -hmm. We know what God can do. We know he's a healer. We know he's a deliverer. You know, some of us wouldn't be sitting here this morning mm -hmm. if it wasn't for the glory of God yeah. because he had, has purpose in our life. Don't think that your work is over mm. you know, because God has more in store for you. Amen. More Amen. in store for you. Yeah. Amen. If it's simply writing a letter or saying God bless you to somebody in the store, mm. you know, opening the door for somebody that might be struggling with it. But we know what God can do. Yes. Amen. We know he's a healer. Amen. We know he's a healer. Yes. Amen. 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 We know he's a healer. He's done something in all of our lives for us to yet love him. Yes. Amen. For yes. us to yet yes. still serve him. Yes. For us to yet obey him. Yes. Like, like Paul did, even with the thorn in his flesh and buffet, they said it probably came from the devil. But regardless, the devil couldn't win that battle. Amen. Don't let him win yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't let him win yours. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you have anything you want to add, Sister Mary? <laughs> um, no, I think the picture over there is wrong. You said it all. I mean, it's yeah. like it's firm as well. Amen. <laughs> to take him out with even though he went to God and asked him a few times, you know, three to, to, to remove that. Right. But it's for God that he gets the glory, you know, and, yeah. and I think everyone in this building possibly, I'm sure, has a testimony, and that's what we use it for. This is Paul's testimony as well as we're Amen. reading of yeah. um, him, you know, being healed of that, you know, yeah. because he used it for his glory. Mm -hmm. And that's what our testimonies are for when he brings us out of illnesses and sickness and financial, whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's for our testimony that, that it will help someone else, just right. as Paul is helping us in the prince. That's yes, yeah. right. Yeah. And we have to tell the testimony. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have gone through different things in life, and we've all come uh, from different walks of life. But when God has done something that can be of a benefit to somebody else, we have to tell of that testimony. We have to tell of his goodness. Yes. What he has done, what he is yes. able to do. Yes. And if he hasn't done it now, doesn't mean that it's still it's not going to happen. Yes. There's a process that, uh, that Paul went through. Um, because like we talked about, it, it would have been easy for him to brag and to say of all of his accomplishments and things that he had gone through. Yes. Uh, and it would have been true. But he knew there was a better effect. Yes. That there was something that the people of God needed, and it wasn't his being bragging. <laughs> it was the thorn in his flesh, and yet God using him through that process. Anytime we go through, anytime that we experience difficulty, there's a pruning, there's a process that God takes us through, and it's for the betterment. It doesn't feel like it's for the betterment. Yeah, that's right. Mentally, 
it doesn't seem like it's going to be for our benefit. But there's a bigger picture. And there is somewhere God is trying to take us and where, we, where we're going to have to be used. And when we are being used, then that's when God gives us the opportunity to testify and to tell what I went through and what God is able to do. But if we hold it, and if we don't tell it, we never know who is being hurt by that. Yes. Because they could be going through that very thing that you have gone through. And that's why it's important for us when God gives us to be led to go and say something to a sister or a brother or to pray or to lay out of hands, we've got to learn how to be obedient and be obedient the first time. Yes. Because we never know what that person is going through. Amen. 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 Now, did anybody have anything else to say about that? Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> All right. So the second part we were going to talk about was Paul's thorn in the flesh. But I think we kind of beat that horse pretty good right there. <laughs> yeah. we, we talked real good about that. Mm -hmm. And the last uh, section, the outline was Paul's cry for relief. Paul's cry for relief. We're going to start with Miss Marilyn. What did you get out of that section? Paul's cry for relief. Okay, even though we have expounded a little bit mm -hmm. already, um, it talks about the thorn in his flesh mm -hmm. and how he went to God and asked him three times um, to remove that. Mm -hmm. And that's when God comes in and tells him uh, uh, that my uh, tells him that his uh, strength is sufficient mm -hmm. is for that for him. So he went through that um, and God just told him, you, you're, you're already going to be okay because I'm using you and you know, using you for this point. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make to get through to people so it says my strength is um, efficient for, sufficient for thee. So that's why I Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's, you know, wonderful for us, for us today that we call God's grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. It lets us know that regardless of what we're going through, He's still holding us up. Yes. You know, even though it feels like, you know, this is my last day here on earth, mm -hmm. yet still God is taking us through all of these steps, all of these turmoils, all, you know, all the things we go through in life. You know, but mm -hmm. our faith and belief in God in, in these simple words yeah. that my grace is sufficient. Amen. My grace, it gives us hope mm -hmm. when we can look to, yeah, I'm going through this, but. Paul went through worse, right. you know, and it's still, it's written here today for us to be able to pull from that. Mm -hmm. You know, these words wasn't just, this lesson was not just typed up yeah. for just because, it's because this, this is the word of God we're reading from. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we, you know, it's about, a lot of this is about belief. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just believing right. what, what his word says. Not what we see daily, because we're seeing some terrible stuff in our Lord, land today. Amen. But we know uh, these are the last days. Amen. And through it all, like he told Paul, his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Amen. Amen. You know, um, while you were talking, I, I thought about the different things that Paul was going through, how he had been insulted, <laughs> how he had been, um, he endured uh, severe personal troubles and how he was persecuted and locked up. I mean, he went through a lot of things. <laughs> all the above. You can check all the above. He went through a lot. And sometimes when some of us go through personal uh, situations or problems, it just offsets us. And yes. in reading this lesson today, how the word talks about to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, yes. his labor of love towards the church of Corinthians was not in vain. They saw firsthand how Paul was persecuted, how he had a thorn in his flesh, but yet he endured hardship as a good soldier. Yes. And this is the example that we have to take. Amen. Amen. Minister um, Talking about what Paul went through was the example of how to remain humble. Yes. 
his humility after all the persecution and everything that he was going through kept him subtle. God gave him the peace and the comfort that he needed to continue to make it through. And it gave him the strength to take the comments that the people were making and not yield to them. Because he could have boasted of how he was saying, you know, intelligent he was and what he was had accomplished and everything. But God used that thorn to keep him humble. Amen. And all he could do was boast about God and what God had brought him through. And not worry about, you know, what the people were saying or because he was talking about him being bold in one area and weak in another one and he didn't couldn't do this and he couldn't do that but he was this way with people and this way when he was around them and he took it all in stride Amen. he didn't let, he didn't let it bother him Amen. some of us today we 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 need that kind of strength yes, because we have a tendency to look out for ourselves rather than allow God to fight these battles. And some of us, you know, we have a tendency to want to, before we think about what we're saying, the word's already out there. And then once you put it out there, it's not something you can take back. And then some harmful things can be said that you don't really mean, and it could be detrimental to either you or the person that you're talking to. Amen. Amen. The scripture says that we have to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he can exalt you in due time. Amen. It's a process. And this is something that Paul went through. We all, just like we talked about earlier, there is a process that we have to go through as children of God. Amen. And we don't know all the time or understand the total reasoning of why we're having to go through what we go through. But knowing that God is able and capable to deliver us from that, that yet gives us hope. Amen. Amen. We've had a, I mean, a, a tremendous lesson today. And um, I would like to get both of yours, uh, kind of sum up the lesson in your own words before we go off here. I think Paul had an awesome testimony. Amen. With his, with his vision first that he saw and was able to tell it, and then with this thorn in his side. And it encouraged, this lesson was partially for me today. Amen. It encouraged me for some of the things I'm going through at this time. And we all have a testimony of some sort. And don't hold your testimony. Amen. Because you hold your testimony back. Somebody needs to hear that. Regardless of where you're at today, you weren't always there. Amen. We weren't always there. But we had to go through something to get there. Amen. And sometimes people need to hear that somebody else is going through something. Because most of the time when you tell your testimony, that somebody there needs to hear it. Amen. So don't hold it to yourself. Don't die with your testimony. Let it be told. Amen. 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 Um, I'm going to just read a little bit. He said, Trust, <clears throat> Paul trusted that God would never leave him. God came through on that promise. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of us, like you were just saying, experience our own thorns in the flesh. Um, and we've been asking God to relieve us of that. And it's okay for us to pray to God, take this away from me, you know, but then you have to be patient and wait and allow him to do that when mm -hmm. it's grace. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talk, it talks about how Jesus was up on the cross. And, and he asked God uh, to take that cup away from him. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he did not. He had a, a purpose, a reason for him going to the cross, dying for us, Amen. Yes. to save each and every one of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we just have to accept whatever God gives us. Uh, he did not spare Jesus from the agony of the cross, but he sent an angel to help him do the will of his Father. Mm -hmm. It is best for all of us to seek God's heart and not just his help. God wants to work mightily in all of our lives. Amen. Especially when we are weak. And we all get weak because this is just a flesh. That's right. That's right. Sweet. So Amen. I thank God for this lesson. Um, and I, like you said, we have thorns in the flesh. Yes, yes. we so do. I, I tell people all the time, even on my job, you know, they say, well, I got that, 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 that. Come on, come on, come on. I said, 
I said my best every day, you guys, while I'm working. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, help me. Lord God, give me right. this is what I do. You know, you know right. this is what I do all day, uh, right. every day. Yeah. 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 You know, because you don't want stuff become a few, 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 few. Yeah. You know, you got to get my strength, you know, so that's why you do this. Yes, girl, girl, you up yeah. to take on those tasks every yeah. day. Yeah. I'm yes. for that. That's mm -hmm. right. That is good. And you know, we have to be like the, the scripture says that we be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and this helps us because this is where we have to be when we're going through difficulties or having that thorn in our flesh. I tell you, sometimes when we are when we're going through that pruning process. God is, there's something behind the scenes that he's trying to do. And I wanted to take mine from um, the Today's Aim, the principle. It says to understand what it means to allow God to manifest his glory through our infirmities. And we have no excuse. We can't leave God. You know, now we can, but would it be the wise thing to do? No. We have to yet go through the infirmity. There was a book that came out uh, called Leading While Bleeding. Mm -hmm. And it was speaking about leaders that go through tumultuous things wow. <laughs> and go through difficulty. And yet, in being a leader, you can't put down the cross and say, I'm I'm going through this and so, this and so, or take a, a, a sabbatical as long as you're in that situation. But yet, yet God gives us a way of escape. He gives us the strength to be able to endure and to bear that thorn in the flesh. What thorn in the flesh are we experiencing today? Just think in your mind, what things are we going through that causes us pain? That causes us some discomfort. That causes us, um, you know, what's, I don't know this word. Discomfort. You get disgruntled. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, it, it causes us just. And sometimes when you're going through pain or things are, um, or things are kind of difficult, it can cause us to get out of character if we're not careful. And that's the last thing that we need to do because the way we. Act and the way we treat people a lot of times can be the, the main testimony that others see. They may not pick up that Bible, they may not come into the church doors, but they're reading you yeah. and they're looking at you to see how you react through certain circumstances and, and difficulties at work. I use that because that's what I experienced. I'm talking about Kyra. <laughs> Those are the things that I went through. And I said, God, I said, you have to help me through that process because I may not always understand why I'm going through this, but there's a reason behind it. Amen. There's a reason behind it. Amen. We had an awesome lesson on today, and we want to thank you for joining us um, on this morning talking about Paul's thorn in the flesh. And we hope that something that has been said or something that has been done, first of all, God's going to get the glory. Yes, and we hope that you apply the word. That word, have I hated my heart that I might not sin against him. We want you to apply the word that you have learned on today and to search out yourselves. Yes. Search out yourselves. It's not just for us just to talk, but search the word out for yourself. Amen. We want you to stay tuned, even though we're going off the air. At 1045, we'll start our AM service. And we know that there is a word of the Lord coming today from our pastor. And we want you to be here with us. So join us at 1045. Thank you.